Investment Trusts, 2022 Awards and 2023 Outlook. So it's been a tough year for investment trusts. The average loss was 15%. And when I look at the best global fund, not many actually made a profit. But one that would have done well for you was Murray International Trust, which has a value tilt to it, but then also has a decent 4% dividend yield. We've got the price performance here and the top 10 here. Um, but it's possible that it's worthwhile selling now because the discount to net asset value has narrowed, whereas previously it's been quite large. So growth might not continue into 2023. For the best defensive fund, I'd go for Ruffer Investment Company, which was actually the only one of the classic defensive plays that uh, made a positive total return in 2022 with capital gearing and personal assets that have things like bonds and gold within those investment trusts, they lost money. Best UK income fund, City of London Investment Trust. It's a dividend hero and uh, it trades on a premium to net asset value, which is kind of justified because of the way it runs itself and the way that you can be fairly confident it's going to pay out and in retirement, it's gonna do what you need for your portfolio. And it's interesting to compare an equity income trust versus a defensive trust and which one you'd rather have in retirement or when you feel a bit uh, defensive. So it's possible that really knowing the companies behind an income fund could be actually better for you than having this multi-asset fund that doesn't really deliver that much when markets are strong and then even potentially posts a loss when markets are weak. Best hedge fund, BH Macro, uh, but it's on a premium to net asset value. So it's a bit difficult to recommend actually buying it and uh, top 10 holdings. Well, it's just a black hole because it's taking all these positions in the market, all sorts of swaps and options. Best private equity is Literacy Capital, which is known as Book. And originally I thought, well, this must be a dog because it's probably just a version of Song, but actually it's not. Uh, it's got quite an interesting uh, investment philosophy and board behind it. It's well worth researching in a bit more depth, but it is pretty thinly traded. So you've got to watch out for that. And if you can't have it in a meaningful size in your portfolio, then uh, it's um, maybe not necessarily for you. Uh, then also the net asset value is this classic stairway to heaven, just keeps going up no matter what the market conditions are. And we have to be a little bit skeptical of that. Best country stroke regional fund is Fidelity Asian Values. Now this is quite a good combination. You've got a dividend yield, you've got a discount net asset value, and you've got a price that is holding its own and certainly doing well relative to other funds of the similar ilk. So uh, worth looking at this one for the future. Best sector fund is Polar Capital Global Healthcare. Healthcare has been really strong in 2022 and could continue into 2023. Got a pretty solid portfolio here. I love the dividend record of Johnson & Johnson. United Health is a phenomenal company that's doing really well at the moment. Uh, and you get it on a discount of uh, nearly 6% in asset value. So that's not bad and that helps to offset the higher fees of an active fund. But the sector itself is a bit of a mixed bag. Polar Capital, the only one to turn a positive total return in 2022. Um, so other healthcare funds, not so great. And biotech, not having the best of years. And I mean, it might reverse in 2023 and you might find that some of these biotechs actually become the leaders next year. Best infrastructure fund is Ecofin Global Utilities and Infrastructure. Uh, infrastructure had a massive sell-off when interest rates rose. This one perhaps a bit more defensive because it's got this mix of utilities in there as well. And actually it looks like there's actually quite a lot of utilities in there. Um, so you've got discounted asset value and 
reasonable yield. Best alternative fund, Gresham House Energy Storage, um, is generally seen as a lack of storage facilities within the UK energy sector and also apparently these energy storage facilities aren't subject to any additional taxes by the UK government that it's imposing on the actual energy companies themselves. So it should be fairly robust in the face of different government policy changes. Um, you've got a fairly decent yield, um, premium to net assets, but uh, maybe that is justifiable given that this one probably isn't that correlated to equities, so it could be quite safe in the future. Best energy stroke commodity fund, I would go for BlackRock Energy and Resources Income Trust, uh, top 10 holdings here, pretty solid, uh, but quite volatile actually, um, but still you've got a fairly good yield there. So now if I put all these into my spreadsheet that I use to analyze investment trusts, what I'm looking for is a lack of correlation to the S&P 500, because I want to find something that's going to do well when the S&P is a bit in the doldrums. So I'm looking at that. I'm also looking at potentially the Sharpe ratio, taking into account volatility as well as share price growth. But actually my favorite measure is this returns over maximum drawdown because that's easy to understand. So I look at duration of drawdown and the extent of the drawdown and use that when I'm considering well, what is actually quite defensive, what's going to be something that I can quite easily hold within my portfolio. So BH Macro is doing really well. Um, Ruffer is doing well also. Um, Polar Capital pretty good um, and then also yeah, I do quite like the Gresham House energy storage that's one I'm going to look into a bit more um, and then yeah here's again look at the correlation BH macro <laughs> the black box isn't correlated with anything so uh, yeah that's interesting but because um, we don't really know what's going on it's it's difficult to say what could happen in the future and you could be in for a nasty surprise Quickly, here's some recommended reading. The Investment Trust Handbook for 2023 is out now. It's free in the Kindle format, so go on, treat yourself. Uh, decent website is quoted data. It's got loads of information. James Carthew, excellent analyst in this area, so it's recommended. Some more funny awards, the Throw in the Towel Award. That goes to Fundsmith Emerging Equities Trust feet. Um, but then the thing to consider is, well, what do I want to avoid going forwards? What caused this to throw in the towel? Was it emerging markets or was it being a concentrated growth fund? Uh, and it is quite concerning for some of these active funds if they can't produce decent returns, even though they've got a strong team of analysts, they're buying in all sorts of data. What help is there for active funds? Next up, we've got dodgy net asset value. So for Seferim Space Trust, net asset value is just constant, which is a bit odd. The share price tells another story, and the share price more mimics what's going on with some quoted holdings in this space sector, such as Virgin Galactic, which has collapsed from around about $14 down to four. So how come all this unquoted space junk is uh, still with a constant net asset value. And don't forget that the fees are charged on the net asset value and not the market capitalization of the fund. So as Pop Will Eat Itself would say, wise up sucker, and if you don't know who the sucker is, it's you. Totally dodgy, this award goes to Home REIT. It had a short seller attack on it. The auditor panicked and shat themselves. The accounts for the period to 31st of August will be delayed until 31st of January 2023 at the latest. If they're delayed further than that, the shares will be suspended. Companies like Social Housing entered into onerous leases and went bankrupt. So there's a counterparty risk behind all this. The net asset value 
is based on bricks and mortar and not likely cash flows. So that's a bit dodgy because you can't actually sell the social housing because you'd have to <laughs> evict the tenants. So, um, you know, it's not really a reflection of the value of the company just to look at uh, the, the properties it owns. So you package up dodgy assets, brand them as safe and underwritten by the UK government when actually it's only the tenants that really have any protection. Could do better award. This goes to Bailey Gifford US Growth Trust. Um, there are growth companies in America, but potentially it's not these ones. Um, things like Amazon, not had a good year, neither with Netflix, and this is excluding some of the stuff like Peloton that this fund once held. Um, growth might have a resurgence in 2023, but it's really too early to tell on that front. So in summary, the outlook for 2023, well, it's a tough call. <clears throat> I do like value backed with a dividend, so something like City of London, so where for ETFs I look at quality, value and momentum, maybe with trusts it might be more dividend value and momentum, and by momentum I mean a share price that isn't declining. Another area to look at is defensive with possible growth, and here we've got healthcare, and then finally non-equity correlated that passes the sniff test. <clears throat> so things like greed here would be quite useful to look at in your portfolio. Hope you liked the video. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe.